um, I'm so much better. So we got a little bit more money than I thought, but yeah. 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 Have we got a new car yet? I actually did. Yeah. I got one today. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. What, what car? Yeah. Uh, just two, 2004 Acura. I just needed something cheaper. Wasn't any point in me having the truck. Good gas mileage. Better than my truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's oh, funny. man. All right, guys. Welcome into the Mind of a Coach podcast. This is your host, Coach Nathan Morand and Coach Asa Duval. If you are enjoying our content, make sure to go to our YouTube page and subscribe and hit that like button as well. And if you also hit the bell at the bottom, it'll alert you for whenever we drop a new episode or any of our content um, as well. If you are on Apple or Spotify, make sure to leave five stars. Also, make sure to hit up our comments if you have any questions or would like us to touch on something specific. Asa, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. I was telling you a little earlier, my head's been a little busted this week, um, but uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm alive and kicking like always. Um, so I, I, I really was. I, I was excited to sit down here again uh, with you and talk. It, it makes my week a little easier. Asa, I was dead serious last week. We're going to have to ask the fans, if you guys think that Asa should wear an alive and kicking shirt, go ahead and comment below and let us know because I think we could make that happen, but it, it'll definitely have to be pressed. But I I think we can make it happen, but uh, yeah, man, it's good. I, I, I've had a great week as well. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just glad to be talking to you again. Yeah, everything good. About You're way down in Cleveland, Tennessee. Man, it's good. It's good, you know, starting to rev up a little bit, hopefully hearing some positive news in the next couple yeah. of days. So yeah. about our season and who knows how it's all going to pan out, but I we'll know. see. It's wild, man. It's wild. Yep. But um, so I'll actually hit the historical fact of the day. So Asa, did you know that in the game of basketball – who I'll just go ahead and ask you who logged the most minutes ever in the NBA. Um, I want to say Kareem. You would be correct. Kareem. Okay. There we go. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar 5,700 or 57,000 minutes and like 56,000 minutes, yeah. like something ridiculous. LeBron, however, is like ninth on the list. If you count Moses Malone. So he's okay. I, I, we'll I, I, would, I would think he's probably going to pass that. He's only ninth right now. Yeah, ninth. I, was, I thought he might be a little higher at the moment, but um, oh, well, okay. All right, Moses, uh, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, most minutes all time in the NBA. Yeah, there you go. All I'm right, glad Ace. I got that. That would have been a bad look if I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, honestly. I was thinking about. I was like, well, Kareem has the most points. Yeah. The most minutes, and it said Kareem. I was like, oh, that's too easy. But I was like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask it anyway. That was good. You 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 killed it. Thank you. All right, Asa. So. What is your weekly positivity? Um, I, I, I sold my truck and bought a car within the matter of two days. So I was trying to make it as, as, stress, as least stressful as I possibly could. And I, I kind of succeeded. So I sold a car and bought a car in, in two days. So I was, I was happy to get that over with and done with. Um, I mean, so wait, so you, so you sold your truck? I did sell my truck. I did sell my truck. Yeah, so, it was, so why is the reason we sold our truck? Uh, it, it, there was no point in me having a truck at this point in my life and I needed a little money to be honest. So I, uh, I sold it. So what did you buy a wagon? Like, what'd you buy if you were trying I didn't to buy, buy a wagon? I bought a car, but not a wagon. I, I did okay, buy a okay. car, just, uh, just older car, just older car, something that gets me to and from the gym. What kind of car? It is a 2004 Acura RL. Oh, so it's got a little bit better gas mileage. Little better gas mileage, little better gas mileage. Little. Yeah. What what does it have? Like fourteen per tank? Fourteen uh, miles a gallon? My truck. My truck had about fourteen. My my Your car truck had fourteen? Yeah, I got it's about pretty good for a truck. Fifteen on average. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, not okay. terrible. So what is I've what does your new car have? Like twenty two, I think. 20, that's 20. good. <laughs> well, that's good, man. I that's good stuff. Um, I guess my weekly positivity would be that we are hopefully figuring out it's not yet but hopefully we are figuring out that we are going to have a season and the schedule and the dates are going to start being locked in so i mean that excites me the the vote is going is about to happen so i mean that would be my positivity if we if honestly at this point if we have a yes or no say it's like thank goodness I, yeah, I would like something to like, you know, give me to just be set in stone for once in this year. I mean, I would like for something to be set in stone. 
2020 what's what's going to happen but you know that that that's not possible i guess hey like you said last week 2020 nothing will be set in stone yeah i know i know man so it's crazy you didn't say nothing as in the way i put it but you said words anyway i digress um asa i can just feel it what are you gonna get off your chest this week (laughs) okay nate it was a great sports weekend for me Sure. It was, it was an incredible sports weekend as a fan for me. And so what I, but hold up, but hold up, hold up. I got to stop you right there. Besides the volunteers. I haven't even started. Yeah, I know. Besides the volunteers. Okay. That might've been great for you, but the Braves that hurt my soul. So, so don't, so don't, so don't. Well, you know, Nate, what anyway, go ahead, go ahead. Since this is my segment, I, I'm not really I, – I don't care too much about your feelings. Okay, uh, thanks. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. So yeah, sure. what I'm going to come on here and talk about was how even in this year 2020, all this stuff going on, we got an election coming up, this pandemic, how I could still sit down and watch Tennessee get mopped by Kentucky football on television. And I, that's okay. what I was going to talk about. Okay. That, that's, what, that's what I was going to talk about, but I'm not, I'm not say, talking about I, it. I will delete then, this. Then Atlanta did the most Atlanta thing ever and blew a 3-1 lead. Okay, so, okay, so you're just coming at me in this. Wait, act. but I'm not going to okay. talk about that either. Okay. I'm not going to talk okay. about it either. Talk about Georgia losing. Then the Titans, Nathan, the Tennessee football Titans, gave right. me the most satisfying victory I have had as a fan in a long time, more so than LeBron. What I felt after that Titans victory on Sunday was – much better than what I felt after LeBron won his fourth ring. I mean, Mike Vrabel is a straight-up gangster. In another life, that guy would be an incredible mob boss because he has got some stones on him, okay? Mike Vrabel is amazing. The Tennessee Titans are rolling, and we are in for a great season. I'm going to say it. We're in for a great season. I love this team. I'm all about it. I can't wait. Let's go, Titans. I love it. I love it. I'm a little nervous about Taylor Lewan tearing his ACL. I hope he gets better. Shout out Taylor Lewan. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Taylor Lewan, if you need any help, I got uh, some experience and some torn ACLs. So yeah, you're, you're buddy's right. got two of them. So if you need any advice, help, et cetera, yeah. um, if you're going to Elrod, which I'm guessing you are, this buddy's had t- two of those. So I got you. I got you, Taylor. So Taylor, reach out to my guy, but, um, Hey, I'm if you if you had taken that any other direction, I might have just just clipped it right out. I might I might I might not have been able to go through with it because the, you're talking to two very dear things to my heart. Three, I know, I know. Three, but you I honestly got, didn't know the Braves personal. were that deep. I don't think I knew the Braves were that dear to your heart until I saw like three tweets from you this weekend. No, so I I've watched the Braves. I like during the regular season. I'm off and on about watching them. I'll keep up with them on my ESPN app, but I I won't watch them as much. Gotcha. Just because baseball in the regular season is hard. Watch for golf instead. It's the postseason. I know you. You love golf right now. That was one of your good yeah. off the chest. But no, I've I've been a baseball or I've been a Braves fan since I was probably about four or five years old. I used to watch it at my grandparents' house every single Sunday. I used to watch Chipper and Andrew Jones, Raphael for call. Like I used to always watch those guys. So the Braves, I was I was up screaming. Dansby Swanson blasts one in the left yeah, side. I'm like. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're gonna win! Freddie Freeman hits a fly ball to right field, and I'm like, "Oh, that's an out!" And then all of a sudden, Mookie just has to start backing up, just start backing up, and I'm like, "Oh, wait, this thing might, this thing might go out, Asa." And no, no, Mookie just started backing up slow because he wanted to rob it. So like, he could have just sat there and just, but no, Mookie wanted to rub it in my face and. Shout out Mookie. He used to he destroyed me in basketball his senior year. I was a freshman at over or when he was in Overton. He just he just destroyed me. But anyway, so he just destroyed me again. My hopes and dreams of the Braves making the World Series. But hey, you know I thought I thought it was destiny, Ace. I thought okay, the last time the Braves had been to the World Series or had won a World Series was nineteen. There is nothing destiny season. about the city of Atlanta. No, listen, nineteen ninety five shortened season, Braves win the title. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, so you 2020, thought it was- 2020, short season, no. Ronald Acuna, hurt wrist, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, Freddie MVP man, like mm-hmm. he was going to get it done. We just fell short. It, it, was, it was tough. 
Yeah. Also, anyway, yeah. I, I got way off there. I got way off. But anyway, hey, so I, I'm going to get in my keys, which I don't have three keys for today because I, I, you know, I heard from a great historian that said, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. And to be honest, I don't have anything valuable enough to say to the listeners right now that would be worth me spouting on for five minutes. So I'm just not going to say anything. However, I am going to ask a question to the listeners and it would be if you guys, or I get a comment slash question. If you guys have anything that you guys want to hear about or learn about or want us to talk about, um, please comment, please. I'm not just saying this because, oh my goodness, we want comments. I really want to know what you guys want to hear from because we would love to be able to talk about that because I think, I, I think we could bounce off questions. I think we could ask another guest etc and look up enough information and we really want to provide you guys with the best information so i think the only way we can provide you guys with that best information is if you give us the questions that we can ask because we're not always going to ask the best questions um we think we we think we will (laughs) but 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 it's always great to have um some knowledge on the backside. so knowledge and feedback feedback is greatly appreciated yes sir yes sir all right brother okay all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got a special guest tonight with us. Uh, we got my good friend Josh Bone. Josh Bone is a Nashville native. He played four years at Brentwood Academy, won four state championships, went on to play his first two years of college basketball at SIU, um, made it to the Sweet 16 his freshman year, led the team in three-point shooting his sophomore year. After that, he decided to transfer to the University of Tennessee to play two years on the Bruce Pearl, where they made two NCAA tournaments and one trip to the Elite Eight. Um, so, and then after that, Bone uh, played three years overseas, uh, including one in Germany. Bone uh, also coached at Antioch High School in Nashville uh, before joining the Tennessee State staff uh, in the 2018-19 season. Josh, how you doing, man? Doing well, young Ace, man. Happy to be here. Appreciate you, Doc. Yeah, man, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, man. Sounds good, man. You can uh, do that introduction again, Doc. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I actually got something on the introduction. So, I mean, obviously we saw that you were successful at all levels. I mean, Mm -hmm. we saw that you won four state championships in high school. We saw that you made a sweet 16 at SIU. We saw you make an elite eight and uh, at Tennessee. And then we also saw you play in professionally, including Germany. And we saw you play or you were coaching at Antioch and now you're at TSU. So you literally hit all levels of the basketball realm every level man and that's a testament to you know all the guys that i played with and the coaches i played under and uh you know they had the blueprint i was just there to you know help and, and give my piece and bring something to the table and um you know winning at all those levels were was definitely inspiring for you know the youth to see that you know it's a kid from nashville mm-hmm. um you know, inner city Nashville that, you know, made it, you know, playing basketball. And, and he did some some great things on on the court and, and now off the court. Um, so so, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of something special and and, uh, you know, keep building. Bone, you've uh, uh, so I see you got you got Kobe in the background knowing you um, know you're a big Kobe guy. Um, we know he's impacted your life a ton on and off the court. Um, talk to us a little bit, like just about how you have a- adopted that that mama mentality and how you apply it to your everyday life. Man, that's that's exactly what it is, man. Just just having that that mama mentality, going out there, you know, striving for greatness. Um, that's a LeBron statement, I guess. Um, <laughs> but that's what it is. I'm sure LeBron got that off of you know Kobe. Um, just yeah. to, to go after everything that you've ever wanted, and it's. It's not just going after it, but knowing that, you know, hurdles are going to come. You know what I'm saying? And you have to jump over those hurdles and, um, you know, just succeed with with anything that, that's thrown your way. And and that's my mentality. Um, that's my – that's Jordan's mentality, but that's everybody's mentality. I, I try to instill in all of those guys a uh, mentality that I, that I coach and uh train or, or whatever but that's something i live by man rest in peace kobe he was mm-hmm. you know, the reason why i wore 24 at at uh ut and uh he's the reason 
you know, my basketball career is what it was and uh, Jordan as well. So. All right. So you mentioned hurdles and I feel like now, especially with the prevalence of social media, people kind of think that the hurdles aren't going to come, right? It's just going to be all smooth. Um, no bumps, nothing, 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 no roadblocks in the way. Sunshine and but, rainbows. Yeah. But that's not the case. Right. <clears throat> and that oh, my mentality completely rejects that like there's going to be hurdles and you have to appreciate the process day in and day out because there's going to be hurdles that you have to go up over absolutely man it, in, in everything in life not just basketball um to be successful i think you learn from your mistakes you know what i'm saying um it, it could be even a podcast you know what i'm saying if you if you mess up yeah it's gonna, it's gonna make you better you know what i'm saying <laughs> or um but it's it's in everyday life, man. That's that's who who I am. I kind of I kind of embrace embrace the the hurdles. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, okay, when I'm looking forward to the hurdles. It makes it fun. It makes it worth it. It makes it fun. Absolutely. Come on, man. I, I have a daughter, and yeah. I apply to my daughter Jersey. Hey, my, hey my first, first of all, before you even go more, congratulations, yeah. brother. That's big. Appreciate time. it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Two daughters. Two daughters. I feel like. I'm Kobe on the way. I'm about to have four daughters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yep. Um, but yeah, to to go back to my point, my first daughter was cake. Jersey was cake. Like it was so easy. She slept through the night. She didn't cry. But then Jace comes and she's the complete opposite. And um it's exciting. Like I tell everybody, I'm like, man, that girl's man, she got so much personality and and just bad you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> but she gives us a run for our money and you know it but it helps us as parents to to go through that so we know what we can handle what to do because jersey was so easy to deal with you dealing with jace who's a complete opposite and it's just gonna make us better parents when, when we get older and have to go to you know if we have another one if God blesses us to, you know, with that opportunity to have another child, mm -hmm. um, if that one is, you know, difficult, we'll be able to handle it. You get what yeah. I'm saying? But like I said, man, it's in everyday life. Um, that's how, you know, my mentality, I'm, I'm just kind of triggered to, to think that way. And, and um, you know, I've instilled that, tried to instill that in everybody I come across when it comes to basketball and, and life in general. So. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you gotta make mistakes to, to get over that hump. Important. So I actually wanted to ask you, like what went into your decision to go to SIU? Because I felt like it was, you were looking for the right fit because you had all these different yeah. options. Like what was the yeah. right fit? So the right fit was, was me playing right away. Um, not too far. It was, it, you know, it was a bunch of variables that, that, uh, you know, what was the, what was the reason why I went to SIU, but um, I had to, I felt like I had a good relationship with the coaching staff. They would come see me. They were putting in a bunch of work and uh, you know, miles just to come see me work out and talk to me um, when I was working out at, at BA and um, you know, came sit down in my house. A lot of teams did it, but they were the most consistent and mm -hmm. um to play under a coaching staff that I felt like believed in me and put in the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, that absolutely. Was very, that was very important for me. And um, obviously going in and playing well. Um, but not only that, like you said, I just, I'm coming off of four state championships. I want to go to a team that can compete as well. Um, and, you know, have a winning program and, and winning culture. And um so man, when I made that decision, it was just like, like I, I really can't beat it because it's it's everything that I want. Yeah. Um, so let let me try it out. All right. So two years on the Bruce Pearl, Sweet Sixteen, two wins. Uh, excuse me, Elite Eight at Tennessee, um, two NCAA tournaments. Bruce Pearl is one of those guys. When I see him, you can you can feel his intensity when he's coaching on the sidelines. Is is he that intense every day and all that he does? Um, Cause, but you can also tell that he he cares. Um, it, it seems to me like he really does care about his players, about the game, about everything. Is mm -hmm. is he that intense at all times? And what is that like to be coached under him? And now you know he's taking Auburn to a national championship game. Obviously, you got to take pride in that. 
Um, talk to us about Bruce Pearl a little bit and the impact he had on you. Um, Bruce Pearl. Um, there's a lot of things that I can can say about Bruce Pearl. A lot of things that I learned uh, from Bruce. Um, but one is he is that intense every day. When it comes to, you know, even off the court, he is he is. I'm not gonna say he's a Hollywood coach, but yeah. he he is, and he's earned the right to be a Hollywood coach. Kind of got that flair to him that. You know what yeah, I'm he, yeah, he, that kind he of has flair. the flair. He knows, he knows how to how to look. He knows that people, you know, their eyes are always on him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So he knows what to do and say. Uh, even when he was out of coaching for a while, he was on TV. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. So he's like he's like one of these coaches that's gotten the grip of social media. Coach Coach Pearl like really like is one of the first coaches to embrace that. I mean, the yes. fact that he wore the orange blazer, the fact that he got yeah. a student yeah. text with Pat, when Pat Summit was playing, like, like all that stuff. No shirt, yeah. He embraced the social media. He, he does. wanted it. He does, man, and and that's who he is. It, there's mm -hmm. a reason why he's won at every level um, and everywhere he's been is because mm -hmm. he is so – he's such a – you know, you, you want to be around Coach Pearl because mm -hmm. you know something is contagious. Going that energy is contagious that he's that got. Energy is contagious. And and that was um when when you play for a coach like that, you know, you can't help but to have that energy and mm -hmm. and, and reciprocate that energy to the court. If mm -hmm. he's turned up and he's fired up on the sideline, you're gonna be fired up on the sideline. And if you know he cares, then you're gonna care for him and you're gonna run through a wall for him. Um, mm -hmm. not saying we have you know, the best relationship in the world, but dude, he taught me a lot. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. he is passionate about the game and, you know, he does care about his players. Um, so I will give him that. Um, X's and O's, he's, you know, he's, he's a genius. It's not just with, you know, his passion. Shit, he knows the game. He studied the mm -hmm. game. He, he didn't play it, but, you know, I think he was a mascot. And mm -hmm. he was a mascot before. You know I saying? remember hearing hey, that. I think I have heard that. So I, I got to ask you something. So a part of your defense that you ran at Tennessee, you guys did that full court press. So walk me through like the significance of that or why he decided to go with that press. I mean, obviously Wayne Chisholm on the ball, he's long mm -hmm. and obviously trapping like how, how the heck are you going to get out of that? But what was the reason he wanted to do that? Was it because he wanted to slow it out of the game? He wanted to cause the team to speed up? Like, Go ahead, and I'll let you kind of take over that question. I mean, it's like you said it. I mean, it's it's all of that. He wanted to speed up teams. He wanted to get them out of out of control and and out of their rhythm. Um, you know, in any team, you've played basketball. All of us played basketball. If you know, we can throw it in and and get into our half court offense set, then you know, with no nobody putting pressure on the ball. Mm -hmm. yeah we we can get it done you get what i'm saying but yeah. it's it's not until somebody's putting that pressure on you that you're really tested as a as a team and that's what he wanted to do and it's also who he is we, we just talked about how passionate and how fired up he is he wants his team to play fired up and he wants the yeah. fans to be fired up yep. how can we play fired up if we're not getting steals and dunks dude and running yeah. transition see, and all that? see like that's something i didn't even think of because like when you look at bruce like or coach pearl he does that and then all of a sudden you look at shaka when he was at vcu and now t or at texas like they mm -hmm. doing the same thing so like they're just playing to their personalities or they're mm -hmm. playing in a style and then their personalities are coming out because of that that's very Absolutely. interesting i never even thought about it that way yeah and and most coaches do i mean you can look at uh, different coaches around um, college basketball and even the league, they play, you know, if they're laid back, most of the time their, their teams play mm -hmm. laid back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and like Greg Popovich. Every, yeah, I mean, like it's in every it's – it's different in every situation, but with, you know, Bruce Pearl and, and Sh even Shaka and even Penny, mm -hmm. we play yeah. – yep. We play fired up. We play intense, and we want to get the crowd involved because if you have, you know, your six man on the court with you, and you know they're giving you all the energy, it's hard for teams to overcome that. Yeah. Momentum is a lot, and once Definitely. we get it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's hard to overcome yeah. that energy. But yeah, that's that's who Bruce Pearl is, man, and and that's why we pressed, and we actually didn't press 
too much when when I was there because we didn't have you know some of the athletes that we were accustomed to having. Hey, you had Swiper Boy though. We did. We did have Swiper Boy. Swiper <laughs> Boy. <laughs> hey man, R- Wildridge. Yeah, shout out to to Ronaldo, man. He was uh, Ronaldo was man one of the most athletic dudes that. Yeah, like he, he it was crazy, bro. Really? He was like six eight, played the guard position. Um, man, it was after practice at times. Dude would jump from the free throw line, dunks, and he was actually in the dunk contest when he transferred to USC. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, he was man crazy athletic, crazy athletic, bro. But um, it was it was I think it was more of a the reason why we didn't press as much as, you know, his previous teams was because, you know, those guys were quick and, you know. Yeah, with Juwan and. Yeah, Walker. Juwan and, and all of those guys and Ramar and, you know, you can go back. But mm-hmm. we still had that same, you know, identity, but our guys were a little a little longer. Um, yep. JP. Not too, not too fast. You got, you know, JP and Cam mm-hmm. Tatum and. Um, Scotty and Ronaldo, so, those dudes, mm-hmm. six six and above. I got I got to tell you something about JP. Yeah. So I've never gotten dunked on, and this is this might shock you as a five nine five ten point guard that cannot jump. Yeah. So this might shock you that I've never gotten dunked on. But <laughs> I, I guess I just know how to meet people at the right place and take a charge, and I'm not going to contest you at the rim. Right. There's one person that has dunked on me. So I guess nobody's dunked on me. There's one person when I was in eighth grade. Mr. J.P. Prince was playing at Prairie Life Fitness in Franklin, Tennessee, and I was playing with him. And I went up for no reason that anyone can understand, and he dunked on me. And I was, and I was, or he dead liked me so bad. And I was walking back, and I couldn't walk. And he goes, or I asked somebody, I said, "Did it go in?" He goes, "Yeah, he dunked on you." <laughs> yeah, yeah, he dunked it. <laughs> so that's my claim to fame with Tennessee basketball is that JB yeah. Prince is the one, the first and only person to ever dunk on me. <laughs> that, that, that's a good dude to dunk on you, man. He was a, a great, great college basketball player, man. He was. He was, uh, he was a stud. And and the reason why he went to Prairie Life was actually because of me. We used to work out there. Yeah, um, you were there. I, not that time, but you yeah, were there yeah. a lot. Yeah, I used to work out there a lot, man. And he actually started training and, and doing a bunch of stuff. He lives out that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, man, JP was – man, he was a, a pleasure to play with, man. I love JP. Um, but, yeah, he had, a, he had a little bounce on him. He yeah, definitely I wasn't expecting had a, it. I had never played with a 6'8 guy that could jump, too, or 6'7, whatever he is. That, <laughs> yeah, man. You know, at eighth grade, it, it shocked me a little bit. Yeah, and I think he's legit six eight. His head is kind of long, so he, <laughs> you know, like he might have an extra inch on that head. But dude he, can play. Dude he's can a raptor play. out there. He's a oh, raptor yeah, for sure. He can, he can, he can hoop, man. I love playing with JP. He had, he had just a knack of scoring the ball. He did, man. and getting to the root, getting to the hoop. Like it was, it was Anytime easy. Anytime he wanted to, he wasn't the quickest. Yeah. He wasn't the the fastest. He was, but he was creative. He was, yeah crafty and you know did what he had to do to 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 help his team win yeah absolutely i i, w- I want to do a little reverse pivot here and mm-hmm. talk okay. we talked we mentioned uh pearl and penny and coaching to your personality and mm-hmm. i think that's important for a lot of coaches out there to coach to your personality because players can tell when you're not being authentic and when you're not being yourself right so right. i think for a guy like penny who is being himself 100 percent of the time Mm-hmm. It works, right? For a guy like Pearl, it works. But maybe for a guy, I don't, for a guy who doesn't have that kind of personality that tries to push that on their players, it's probably not going to work out. Um, yeah. So that's one of the things that I've noticed. And if if you're just coach to your personality, right? Um, yeah. I think that goes for everybody because players do notice that a lot. They're very re- perceptive uh, of what you are. Yeah, um, and they they can perceive when you're being fake and if, mm-hmm. if it is who you is and if it if it's not. Um, Penny is one guy, man, that, you know, I'm learning so much from him because he's a young coach, but Mm -hmm. he's, he's seasoned. Um, You know, he's like, when he played, he, Mm -hmm. he high major teams as well. So he's not afraid of anything. Um, He's won. um, And he's passionate about the game. Um, We we laugh all the time. Uh, Me and him probably debate more than anybody 
in in college basketball. Yeah, yeah. we debate damn near every day. You yep. know, what I'm saying about yeah. something just because we love the game so mm-hmm. much. And shit, we debate about music. You know what I'm saying? Ace in there, like he know what, what it is. Oh, don't listen to Ace's game. opinion. Ace's opinion doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I lived with him for four years. It does. Don't listen to him. Come on, Ace, 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 man. Look, me and Ace was going at it too, but I, he, 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 I guess he knows Jay Z. He definitely he does know Jay Z. Bone Thugs the only rapper I listen to. Jay Z. No, 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 no. I know you listen to some more people, but I know you know Jay Z. I, I right. felt your passion about oh, it. Appreciate and, it, and I respect it. I respect. Yeah, it. you can't go at him about Jay Z. Nay, we had a we had a literally a versus like those Instagram battles in the in the office the other day, and me and Penny were playing Jay Z, and him and Coach Nick were playing Drake, and we had the players judge, and it was hilarious. It was so much fun. Yeah. That's oh, man, we went. See, like, him. hey, that's and the then, stuff. Yo, then, Take yeah. videos of that and put it on Twitter and. True, you'll have true. a ton of retweets that's that's, that's stuff that's like it, you, you we do need to do that but that's stuff that's like super fun that especially as a coach that you get to just do with your staff every you know every day something like that'll pop up yeah hey man even with the players even with the players they they respect it because they're now engaged and they know that it's not just basketball with our yeah. coaching staff but we relate to y'all on so many levels man. and we have yeah. a young coaching staff so I think we have a little bit of of an advantage, but Mm -hmm. um, they, I think they respect it. And that's why they love us because they can relate to us more. But um, to, to go back on Penny, man, Penny is, is passionate about the game and he loves the game. And that's why I love being under him. And I know you do as well Yeah, uh, because he's teaching us so much. And um, I think he's, he's definitely a coach that, you know, his personality is, is why he's successful. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Because he loves it, he's passionate. He he pushed the, um, he he pushed it. You know, he you know, these guys, man, they they work hard because he works hard for them. Uh huh. And um, you know, we go hard at practice because he goes hard at coaching. You exactly, know and you can tell it too. Yeah. He ain't gotta really tell you. You can you you can you can tell from just how he is, how from how yeah. he is, and how he carries yeah, himself. You, you can feel it. You can feel it, man. And I'm blessed to you know being the um you know, the, the situation that I'm in. Um, and you are too, man. We, mm-hmm. we learned it from one of the, the great head coaches in college basketball, man. The sky's the limit for, you know, yeah. not only him, but for all of us because we're we're seeing what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Uh, all right, so let's do a front pivot now. We just did a reverse. Let's go to a front wow. pivot. You, you mentioned JP. We got a lot of basketball terminology going on. You mentioned yeah. JP. The reason I bring this up, Bone, you had these pickup sessions after I graduated high school. JP mm-hmm. Prince was there. I know Melvin Goins was there. Wayne Chisholm probably showed up. A lot of a lot of Nashville hoopers. Hold up. Did you ever hoop at BGA? I got to interrupt. Oh, yeah. Middle man. school? He, uh, maybe. Man, I've, I've hooped everywhere. Because I, because I was <laughs> definitely there one time when uh, Wayne Chisholm was there. I mean, Tebow literally came in like the next week. I, I don't know yeah. if you were there for that, but Tebow came in the next week. Chisholm was there. Um, there was some girl from Hillsboro. I think she ended up going to Tennessee. She was there. Um, but there were like a bunch of people. I think you might have been Isabella. there. Yeah. Isabel maybe. Harrison. Maybe. We, I mean, we hoop all the time anywhere. Yeah. yeah. But that's when I, so you had, but anyway, these sorry, games. Asa, go no, ahead. Asa, go ahead. So you had these pickup games, right? And I had just graduated high school and all these, these players who I knew about looked up to and wanted to play with, I, you, you let me come and hoop there. And I just remember how important that was for me as a player coming out of high school, going into Hargrave and then college, being able to play with these older guys who we, and we did what it was probably every Tuesday and Thursday at six o'clock. Right. And we were always there. And what I'm getting at is um, it's with all this, you know, skill development going on. I feel like sometimes pickup gets lost and not that skill development isn't important because it certainly is. But I also think it's important in the summer to just get out and play, play with people that are older than you, faster than you, stronger than you. And those pickup games that you put on, you know, that, that gave me that. That's what, that's what I needed. And so I, I think it's important to, to, to get out and hoop because – and you, you understand that, right? Like, you, you got it. You knew it. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. That's part of who you are. Yeah. Man, those, those hoop sessions, man, were – they were great for me as well, just because, yeah. you know, I was trying to be a pro, you yep. know, and I, I was yet to become a pro. I was, you know, playing, um, you know, semi-pro and I was trying out for 
different teams and all type of stuff at the time, but that kept me going, man. Like it was yeah. Tuesday yeah. and Thursday. That was my therapy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, let's get the yeah. hoop around the city and let's just hoop. Like yeah. for and we we can say for two hours, but you know, we ended up being there three hours some nights, like just <laughs> going at it. The and the best part of the funny thing about it was, you know, it was it was six o'clock, but you ain't tipping off until six forty five nah, first nah, game. Nah, <laughs> You know, look, hey man, it's it's just like me today. Like yeah. I was supposed to, I was supposed to be on here seven thirty, but it was <laughs> damn near eight, hey, uh-huh. seven forty five. Like, but you know, guys coming from different areas, and but it was man, it was a pleasure to see just everyone just locked in, and yeah. we didn't have no excuse my language, but we didn't have no bullshit, bro. Yeah. Like we yeah. were just hooping. Yeah, we yeah. were yeah. hooping. Yep. And and that's what it's about for me. When I go into a gym, yeah, you're going to have your little arguments and, and competitive, you know, ways, and which is understood, but yep. it was strictly basketball. Everybody, was, everybody was there for a reason. Everybody was there for a reason. We didn't have people just there that – Just wanted to – yeah. That wanted to be there. I didn't allow mm-hmm. it. I'm just like, yeah. man, if you ain't playing, if you don't have a love for the game and, and yeah. you're not – uh, a high school graduate that's playing college that plans to play at the college mm-hmm. level, or you're not a college player, or you're not a professional, you don't need to be in the gym because you're taking away from us getting better. You, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it was definitely good for, I know it was good for you because you, you got to see all kind of players yeah. come in there and yeah. you had yeah. to, you know, height of your game as a, you know, mm-hmm. a, a senior Going mm-hmm. into a Division One program, you know what I'm saying? You needed that. You needed yeah, absolutely, to, absolutely. To get beat up a little bit and go at yep. you know, guys that were, you know, that proved themselves and played high Division One college basketball yep. and even professionals. And you didn't back down, and that, mm-hmm. that's why I always respected you. I knew, you know, man, I want Acer to come. You know yep. what I'm saying? Because he gonna bring it. You know yep. what I'm saying? Um, and everybody in here is going to bring it. And yep. we just going to hoop. We're going to get mad at each other. We're going to compete. But we, at the end of the day, when we're done hooping, we're going to shake up. Hey, man, see you Thursday, dog. Yep. Man, that, yep. that, that, that was good. Do it again. And that was the, the, the cool thing about it, too. Not just the physicality and the, and the just, the, you know, the skill of, of those players. But also, I got to play, quite frankly, with guys who didn't grow up like I really grew up. You know, guys who, who grew up completely different than me. And I got to see that side of it, too. Yeah, um, and that was super beneficial for me, and I, I really think that's beneficial for everybody. Play with people that aren't from just where you're from. Get out and go. Play against different people from different places. And I and that that's that's key because I feel like I am I am like a, a bridge. Yeah, that joins both sides together. Mm-hmm. Like I was raised, you know, in East Nashville. Didn't have m- much. Um, and when I moved to Antioch, when I was seven years old, I was like, shit, man, like, <laughs> we, we doing it. You feel me? And then yeah. I ended up going to BA and I was like, <laughs> man, we not doing too good. But, but now, nah, man, like I, I was raised in, in that, you know, that area and, you know, bad parts and went to school in bad areas. But, you know, that, that molded me to who I am. And then when I went to, BA, I appreciated that too, man. I, I learned yeah. so much from from um, you know people who were you know not like me, and I was able to you know connect with them as well. Exactly. Like everyone, just because you you live on the bad side, it don't mean that yeah. BA people don't have problems too. And yep, people sure. that yep. live in Brentwood don't have it's different problems. You know what yep, I'm yeah. saying? So it was um it was man it it was. I loved every every moment of it. They like, man, you ain't. I got people that I remember busting some people ass in in gyms, and they bring back, oh man, you went to BA, man. Like that ain't that ain't nothing. I'm like, dude, some of them dudes got more problems than you would ever yeah. imagine. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Those families, but man, to bring all of it together and and see the hood out in BA and see yep. you going at yep these dudes and whoever it meant a lot to me is like shit we bridging the gap you get what yeah. i'm saying like this game has created 
No, it's, it's just beauty in the game, man. And everyone, it is. you know, it, it brings people together. And that's why I love it so much. Yeah. yeah hey, man. man, so you're talking about, like, bridging the gap. So I'm, I'm going to go off a different bridge. I'm going to kind of go off of it, off of your pickup sessions. But, okay, so you played as a player. You're now as a coach. So you're trying to bridge that gap, correct? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're a young coach just like we are. What has been the biggest difference for you, like as a player and as a coach? Like, what what has been the biggest adjustment you have had to try to make? Has it been easy? Has it been hard? Has it been like, uh, I mean, I can like obviously we all are competitors here. I mean, I I, I think I'm gonna speak for I'm gonna speak mm -hmm. for you, but I'm also speaking for me. I, I I mean, Kobe mentality obviously lives I think within both of us if, and Ace as well. Like like if you say I can't do it, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. Facts. Facts. So. But what has been the biggest thing? Because, I mean, college coaching is an adjustment. It is, it is a huge adjustment from playing because, like, it used to be as a player, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, succeed, I'm not succeeding on the court. I'm just going to go get in the gym. But, yeah. like, as a coach, mm -hmm. you have to find these, like, little other ways and niches that you have to find to be successful. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I just want to pick your brain on that and see what you personally feel about, okay, this has been the biggest adjustment or – this is what we need to do as young coaches, et cetera. Um, I think the biggest, the biggest thing for me is understanding that the players are not you. Yes. They don't, they don't think like you. Mm -hmm. They don't work like you. Yeah. And they're not capable of doing the things that you did. And I'm not saying that they're not better players. Right. All I'm saying is that some kids, and, and this is at all levels, from high school and, and what I see from, from other players, um, not, you know, just, I'm not just speaking on TSU, but I'm talking about everywhere, just, mm -hmm. you know, talking to different yeah. coaches and, and talking about their players. If, if you're off, if you're off in a game, why aren't you getting in the gym? Right. Mm -hmm. Or if a coach is telling you that's done it before, why aren't you listening? Why are you giving them back talk? I've never given a coach back talk in my life because I understood that they are there for a reason. Yep. And obviously they're in that position because they know more than me. Mm -hmm. And if they don't more, if they don't know more than me, I'm going to act like they know more than me because I'm going to respect my coach. Yeah. And see, I think that's funny too, because like, I mean, I'm just putting myself in a player's perspective right now because you're talking from like, you're, you're, you were mature enough to know that, okay, these coaches have been there. They have done that. They have succeeded. And now they are at this level that is far beyond what I am even imagining right now. Like they're at this coaching level, they're trying to mentor me, mm -hmm. but as players, like I, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to say when I was a player, I would look at a coach and be like, okay, well, he's done that, but there's almost like, I mean, I'll give my, I'll give my uh, example. Um, coach, uh, coach Draben, he was mm -hmm. scored however many points at Belmont. Mm -hmm. or was one of I think he played right before uh coach Collins Penny and mm -hmm. two years they played yeah two years yeah ago. but like he kind of he, he was the one that brought that trajectory up like I, I don't know if he mm -hmm. finished first or second in his conference but led the conference in free throw percentage three-point percentage etc was super mm -hmm. successful and I even found myself being like like coming at him and it was like and I would like have to take a step back and be like whoa whoa, whoa. right this guy was just as successful and he has even learned more since then Mm -hmm. right like, like he's been a player he's been where mm -hmm. i've been and like for instance i mean i remember him telling me about like uh form shooting and stuff and i was like nah like i don't need that like i'm, I'm trying to go long distance and he was like right. and he would just like shake his head and i'd be like whatever like mm -hmm. but like looking back on it like it's the stuff that i needed like i wish i'd taken mm -hmm. like i wish i'd taken i wish i had not taken that for granted because like right, right. i mean if you know coach draven he's one of the most intellectual guys about the game Mm -hmm. that you will know he's now the head coach of Bethel like he's yep. a guy that you would love to pick you would love to pick his brain so right. like what I'm, what I'm asking you is like from a coach from a player to a coach like you already answered a, a ton of it but I'm just going to get to this little part yep. is 
you do you you kind of look at these kids like or like as a kid you're kind of like oh these coaches like they don't know what they're talking about like they ain't right. never played but then it's like all right, all right hold up like we we played like we played and we've exactly. been successful <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. So like, like right. how is, is that, is that challenging for you to like try to get somebody like, or tough for you? Because like, it's like, man, like I played at the SEC level. Like I, I played, yep. I was very successful. I have played big minutes in a sweet 16. I've played big minutes in an elite eight. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Y'all like, how do, how do I get y'all to listen to me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It is man. It's, it, it's tough sometimes just because, of of reasons like that, but I don't even think that it's it's because of you know me playing in an elite A game or playing big minutes and playing in Sweet Sixteens and making NCAA tournaments. I think it's just, hey, dude, listen to me because I'm your coach. Yeah, <laughs> you yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, not like an ego thing with you. Right? It's not like an ego I, thing. I, yeah. It ain't yeah, it, like, it's just like, you know, respect me. And also I kind of do this for a living. I, I'm working every day at it exactly. and I'm trying to help you. Like I'm, I'm trying to help you be better, be better at something. So I yeah. guess what my question was trying to get at is how do we help players or how as coaches do we, okay, we know all this information. Listen, these kids are going to have egos. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's just part of it. Yeah. How do we still get to them anyways? Hey man, be a coach. Million dollar question. <laughs> hey, we we have to keep on pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Yeah. Even just because they, you know, we we weren't weren't perfect. You know yep. what I'm no, saying? No, definitely not. Sometimes mm -hmm. we would get mad at somebody, like you just said, form shooting. Like, what you mean you form shooting? Like, I can, yeah. I'm back there with it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the end of the day, he kept coaching you. And hey man, this is what you need to do to become successful. If you don't want to hear me today, I'm going to tell you tomorrow. Maybe yeah. tomorrow you're going to listen. Yeah. It's consistency. If you don't listen, yeah, it's consistency. And but like I that's one thing about me. I won't give up on a player. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I I understand these kids are different nowadays. Yeah. And and they will say we were different they you know, yeah. back then. Yeah, they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, we ain't hey, we ain't listening to NBA young boy. <laughs> hey, you hey, you right about that. You right about that. But you know, you know, every generation is different. I I just think we just have to continue to, you know, teach these kids, man, and, and don't give up on them. And and one day they're gonna listen. We're gonna beat it in their head so long. One day they're gonna listen. I tell my brother all the time, he used to shoot it flat. He used to hold, hold his shot, he used to jump so he's so athletic. Yeah, he gets so high, yeah. He gets so high on his shot. Hey man. Don't jump so high and shoot on the way up. It's going to give you a better chance. You know, you're, you're going to have more arc on your shot. Look at Steph Curry. Look at Steph Curry, bro. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, Dame Lillard. These dudes are – look how they shoot. Yeah. Those are the two best shooters, you know. Look at Clay, mm -hmm. Dude, they not – they shooting on the way up. Yeah. You know? If Jordan don't want to listen to me, then one day he's going to listen to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, he's he's getting to that point. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, hey, if Jordan isn't the younger version of Drew Holiday, I don't know what it is. Oh, my God, man. Hey, hey, dude. You, I'm, you I'm brought just, him I up. It. I said it. You, you brought, you brought Drew Holiday up, and we talk about Drew Holiday all the time. He is really? my quiet – like, he's – He's my that's one actually of my a great, players. That's actually a great com great comparison. That's all I've ever seen. I, I'm like, man, okay, fast, shifty, but not in the way you would envision. You know what I'm saying? Like, great. he's not going to like he, – he's, he's so north and south the way you would want someone to move. Mm -hmm. He's not going to try to, like, rock you like AI would or like yep, Kyrie yep. would, but mm -hmm. he knows how to get to his spots, and then he can just yep. rise. And like, and, like, Drew's got that, like – rise to his jump shot that's all i've ever seen so i'm like all right but, jordan, and, jordan's drew yeah man I, hey i wish drew is a, a great player in my opinion man yep. that dude is very underrated mm -hmm. there's one thing that drew has that jordan don't have right now zion well, two, two oh, things my fault. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but well three things well drew plays defense he can guard out of his mind man me and jordan he's a dog 
we we study the game all the time. We man, yeah. we talking about basketball every day. But man, if you look at Drew Holiday, you got defensive highlights. Like who has defensive highlights? Yeah. And we watch Tony him Allen. Play. <laughs> Yeah, those guys. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Legends, yeah. ha- legends have, have legends. defensive highlights. Like yeah, 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 man, go, go get you. Hey, man, you ain't touching the ball. I'm going to touch the ball today. I'm going to give me about three, four steals this game and dunks on the other mm-hmm. end. That's, that's six to eight points. Easy. Mm-hmm. Easy. Yeah, yeah, man. That's special, man. But that's that's one thing that he has that Jordan don't have. Like, Jordan needs to. But I feel like Jordan could. Like, oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Jordan is an athlete. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he just hasn't. You know, like that's why I say his, his ceiling is extremely high, man, because he hasn't even tapped into everything that he's capable of doing right now. He's he's getting better. He's taking those strides every year. Yeah. And um, Drew Holiday, you know, he got that bag too. So that's that's another yeah. thing. Jordan ain't got he ain't got that yet. But hey, uh, he's working on it though. He's yeah, working oh, on it. Gonna, <laughs> hey, man, he's doing his thing, man. He's uh, for sure. Uh, I'm proud of him, man, but. Yeah, we we love Drew Holiday. Hey, and I'm I'm gonna go ahead and speak as a younger brother. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and speak, I guess, for Jordan to you. So I have an oldest brother. That's the reason I fell in love with the game. Um, he's the one that uh, is a year above you. He played a BGA. He probably didn't play a ton, but you yeah. know he was that he was that he was even shorter than me, believe it or not. So yep. he was about five seven five eight. He had, I mean, it, you would have noticed him. He had the big old arms. He's number ten when you played. I'm but, sure. Uh, I'm sure I remember. But um. Anyway, I'm speaking as a younger brother. Hey, we don't make it without you guys. Like, you oh, guys, man. like, I noticed for my older brother, he wanted it so bad that, like, I wanted it. I wanted it yep. at a young age. And then he pushed me, and I wouldn't I, – there's no chance I would have played at Lipscomb if it wasn't for yep. him. There's no chance I would have been a part of an NCAA tournament team, NIT run, scored 1,000 points, like, whatever I did. Yep. There's no chance I would have done it without him. And he was always the first person I talked to. He was also the first person that I gave a hard time to. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, so. shut up. Shut up. Like, I don't want to yep. hear from you. I don't yep. want to hear from you. Yeah. Yep. But listen, like, as a, as a younger brother, talking to an older brother right now, yep. so I'm talking to you. Hey, we appreciate you. Um, there's, there's no way a younger brother could do the stuff that they have done without their older brother or without the guidance of an older brother. So, man, that's, that's, appreciate that's you what's guys. up. Yeah, uh, man. I, I respect that. I respect. I definitely respect it, man. It's, it's, um, you know, seeing what Jordan has, has done, um, you know, I'm, I'm his biggest critic. And like you said, you should be. Yeah, 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 yeah he, definitely. Your, your brother was the first person you talked to if you had, you know, if you scored a 20 point game or a 30 point mm-hmm. game. And he's also the first one that get on your butt if you, you know, um, I you know, you I don't, if, if you don't have a good game, you know what I'm saying? And he's yeah. the first one that's going to critique you. And that's the, the last one that you want to hear from when you play bad, but yep. you know he's always in your corner and he's the one that pushed you. And period. You know, parents are going to be parents. Of course, they're going to be hard on their kids, but mm-hmm. parents are they don't have that same bond as a as a brother. You know, they, yeah. they can't be engaged and connect with them on that level. But George, because, man, is, because I think a brother can be like is going to be honest. They're going to be honest. Like, of I mean, course. you're going to tell Jordan, okay, listen, you didn't have a good game tonight. This is what you need yeah. to correct. And your brother and, and Jordan's going to look at you and be like, dude, screw you. Like, I don't want to talk yeah. to you right now. Like, yeah. get out of yeah. here. But if it's your parent, they'd be like, hey, you know, you did a really good job. Your character was good, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. You're going to be like, okay, thanks. Like, I, I still don't want to hear from you, but I'm going to go to right. bed now. Right. Your brother, you're going to be like, screw you. And then you're going to listen. Like, this is just personally. Yep. I would have listened to it and been like, hey, get away from me. Like, I don't want to listen yeah. to you right now. I'm gonna go sit down, and then ten minutes later, I'm gonna be like, "Dang, he was 100 percent right." Like, oh, nah, exactly. screw him, screw him. All right, he's yeah. he's right, he's right. Hey, man, it's uh, it's beauty and all of that, man. Yeah, it's beauty, and I I love being that big brother. Like, yeah, people say, man, you always pushing for Jordan. If you see my social media, like, I might say something about Jordan, and you know, I'm ha- I'm a happy big brother. I, I believe that Jordan's Should gonna, be. you know not only a great player in the NBA, I think he's going to be an all-star once he figures it out. Yeah. You know, people didn't think he was going to get to the spot that he was going to be in, but I knew he would because I knew that he loved the game and he had some tools um, that he has that a lot of people don't have. He has quickness. He has athleticism. He can pass the ball. He can shoot the ball. Straight line speed. 
I don't yeah, think there's like anybody that. in the NBA that has straight line speed like him. No, no, not at all. But um, I knew we were going to work, and I knew it was going to be some battles. We've been battling, you know, since he was a kid. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, he he hates when I get on him, and we still fight to this day. Just, hey, bro, like, I, yep. I work him out, and he, he's mad at me and don't want to talk to me. And when we play against each other, we're talking bad to each other. Hey, man, you ain't nothing, dog. You need to get better. I don't yeah. care if you're in the NBA. You need to get better. Yeah. If you're in the NBA, I need to be in the NBA because I'm competing with your ass. And that talk yeah. needs, yeah, that needs to happen. Yeah, needs yeah to like, happen. just like you got to have bad. somebody in your life as a basketball player who's willing to talk to you like that. Oh yeah, you got to because you know once you make it to that level, everyone is you know kissing your butt and, yep. and oh man, yeah. you're, you're you're great. Nah, you're not that great. You yeah. you got some things to work on, bro. Like you need you got a lot to work on. How great do you want to be? Yeah, how great do you want to be? Do you want to be? And that's that's the the theme of our workouts. You know, yeah. most of the time is like, hey, bro, like you, you making shots, but you you missing a lot. You think Dane missing? You think you think Steph missing? You think they getting mad over a few missed shots? You know what I'm saying? Like you you striving to be great, not to stay where you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're always trying to level up. Um, for instance, um, you know, I'm always on his, on his butt. We're watching the, the Lakers game and the, the finals game and he's sitting down and the whole family's watching the game. And I say, man, you know what, bro? You're like, you, you know why Rondo is so beneficial to the Lakers, bro. And my dad, my dad says, why, why, why you think I'm like, because he played defense. Like he's smart. Jordan don't play no defense. He won't, he won't take a charge. And yeah. I said, what you think about that? And he like, man, I ain't trying to talk about that right now. I'm just trying to watch the game, bro. I said, you need to be studying the game. Mm-hmm. You need to be studying. Why is Rondo so beneficial? Mm-hmm. Rondo is beneficial because he's smart. He Dude, plays, he's and that is your coach coming out of you. That, that's, yeah. that's what I love. Yeah, like it, it don't like, stop. That's you're here right now. It does it? Do not stop. It's like it you have like stop. you have figured it out. Like you, you're yeah. figuring it out. You're fi- you figured it out. And like as players, like we can go back. Like I wish I knew what I know now as a coach. Oh my god! Oh, that is like the biggest. That is like one. You said it. Yeah. You said it, Nate. That is perfect, hey, Nate. Like hey, perfect, man, Nate. Don't don't nothing else need to be said, <laughs> bro. If I knew what I knew now, ooh. One look, I, I, I you and, become such a better basketball player when you're done playing basketball. Oh my god, twice is good automatically. Oh my god, I remember one conversation that, and I'm and I'm not going to elaborate on the the whole conversation, but when Jordan was a high schooler going into UT, just signed to UT, I remember being in the parking lot at Opry Mills Mall, and we were shopping or, or whatever we was about to go shopping. And he said, bro, before we get out the car, he said, man, tell me one thing that you would do different if, if you was in college again. And I said, man, work my tail off. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just, man, work at night. Work. Work. Hey, work your tail study. off. Hey, we had that in a segment. Man, yeah. study, study the game. Like, know what's important. Because I've seen players, man, like, uh, I'm, I'm going to say I, I was, you know, I played with Tobias Harris, and he was one of the hardest workers. He didn't go out. Um, Scotty Hobson was probably the most talented player on our team, but Tobias wanted it more. Tobias was a McDonald's All-American as well, but mm-hmm. Scotty, I mean, those two dudes, man, and I'm not taking nothing away from Scotty, but Scotty was supposed to be in the league. Yeah. Like he was supposed to get drafted high, yeah. first round draft pick, still in the league today. He, yeah, he he was yeah, that he, he was now. big time. But Tobias, he didn't go out. He didn't drink. He was working out every morning at 6 a.m. Every morning as a freshman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not going out. And it shows now. And it shows now. Where he is that? Being getting paid, you know what yep. I'm saying, and doing what he loves to do by playing the game of basketball. And it started then, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So that that's what I wanted to to tell Jordan. Just, hey, man, work. Work like Tobias did, bro. Like, yeah. he, you know what I'm saying, he, he's getting paid and and doing what he loves at a, at a high level, has a name around the, the league just because he, he put in that work when nobody else wanted to do it. 
He did it. Even when the talented ones, you know, were chilling and and doing whatever, mm-hmm. he was in the gym. He knew what what he wanted to do. So yeah, nah, man, is it to have a big brother that's you know on you like that? I think it's beneficial. I I wish I had it, but you know. But hey, instead you got you got to be that big brother. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So like, you got to somebody got to do it. Like, and I definitely the younger I, brother gets the fame, but the the older brother should be the one that like, hey, listen, like we wouldn't be here with y'all without y'all. Hey man, hey, at the end of the day, they still they still gotta put that work in. They still gotta put the ball in the hole. They still gotta they gotta do it. So I, I don't want any credit from it, man. I, I just wanna continue to teach and you know, I'm still learning myself. You get what yep. I'm saying? But yeah. just appreciate to to all the young dudes out there with with big brothers and people that's, you know coaching you and, and teaching you the game appreciate it man and, and take it just like our players mm-hmm. take it take the teaching it, it's going to be beneficial if you think you know it all it's over with yep yeah over with. yes Amen. yes and that could be said time and time again yes um yeah well i know bone i know you've been there every step of the way i know for a fact i've seen you uh i've seen you be there every step of the way for him so i mean that's i think that's amazing man but all right so as we wrap up in about a minute and a half tell us about this no gas life Hey man, no gas, man. It started with with me. Everything that you know I've been through as a basketball player and in life, and it 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 was birthed. You know, the seed was planted with me, but it, it started to you know um, show its 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 flower. You know, it started to blossom when Jordan went through his process. And yeah, uh, what no gas is is just you know an individual who works for everything despite. If they get the love, the pub, the hype, or the gas, if they're not gassed up, but if someone yep. that succeeds through it all, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. um, that that's what no gas is. We we created it when Jordan was, you know, in college, just a cool little hashtag. But um, I think it's it's more. It's a clothing line, but it, it's a a movement with people that just want to strive to be great man and and Mm -hmm. you know push over all those obstacles that i was talking about earlier and uh just making it to whatever you know you can be the the uh, nba player you can be the ceo of a company you know you can be the the greatest coach that has ever played you can be uh, a singer then whatever it is Mm -hmm. you know actor um whatever it is you can accomplish it you just have to believe in yourself and you don't need everybody to be behind you to do it as long as you have you know your put your head down and work up. put your, your head down and work you, down don't, work you don't need to be gassed hey up. yep be your own fuel you know what i'm saying so so that's that's our motto be your own fuel um hey man and and, and accomplish everything you want to accomplish so that's what no gas is man and what's that and what's the website for bone Website is uh, www.nogas.com. That's with a zero, not an O. Um, and, you know, go out there, man. Support the movement, man. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, man. Well, hey, we wishing Jordan the best. Bone, sure. I can't wait for this season with you, man. I appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, it was a blast. Uh, always fun to talk basketball. I know Nate enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, man. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all having me, man. I, I can talk basketball. Any day of the week. Hey, I want to have you on again sometime in the future, man. I really do. I I really do. I enjoy this, man. I enjoyed it because it's fun to do it outside of work, you know. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And we can – hey, man, we can talk about anything. You already know me. Yeah. We can talk about that man behind you, too. That's my favorite athlete (laughs) of all time, Muhammad Ali. (laughs) Love him. Love him, man. (laughs) Hey, uh, amazing. Hey, amazing. Hey, seriously, thank you again for coming on, man. I, I mean, I think you've provided the listeners a lot. Um, one of the things we went into this week or we asked and we pulled people was, hey, who do you want to listen to? And the top two answers were players and coaches. So yeah. not only did we find a player that played at the highest level, we yep. found a coach as well, an yeah. aspiring young coach as well that we are – both looking forward to doing as well. So mm-hmm. I really appreciate what you've done. And uh, I appreciate everybody that's listening in tonight. Um, thank you for joining in to the Mind of a Coach podcast. This is your host, Coach Nathan Moran, Coach Asa Duvall, and we have our special guest, uh, Coach Josh Bone. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Nate5 underscore Moran. You can find Asa on Twitter at 
the Ace of Spades with a Z on the end. And Josh, where can we find you on Twitter? On Twitter is Josh Bone twenty four. Josh Bone twenty four. Please do not forget. Make sure to give him a follow because Instagram uh, is King King Lebone, right? King Lebone, baby. King Lebone. Okay, so follow both of them because I promise you he's spinning out good information. You're not going to want to miss it. So once again, you can also find us on find us at Mind of a Coach One on Twitter and Mind of a Coach on Instagram. Um, you, we also have a Facebook page as well. Um, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you don't want to watch our faces, then just listen in on uh, you, uh, and Spotify or Apple Podcast. Guys, we thank you again for coming on and we look forward to seeing you guys next week.